you only need to scale with one campaign using meta ads. Now I'm sure you've been scrolling on Twitter, I'm sure you've been finding different videos from different gurus online and YouTube basically telling you, oh, you need to go full interest-based targeting, oh, you should do cost caps, bid caps, you should utilize these other features look like audiences retargeting when it comes to running ads to grow your business. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions to that theory. Ultimately, what makes a brand successful on ads is actually having product market fit, having a product that the market wants and your ability to generate demand just how by how good the actual product is, right? So I say this to say, nothing is gonna work more for your business. You can test a different strategies, you can test different creators, different landing pages, different offers, but nothing's gonna move the needle more for your business than having product market fit. Now, ads only amplifies your business. Ads shouldn't be used to be the breaker or the downfall of your business, right? Ads should be solely used as amplifying your business. If you cannot generate results organically, you're bound to fail, right? I would say just set up shop, start a different brand, launch a different product. Because if you use ads as a crutch that makes your business by the dime or by the edge of the same sword, that can also deflate your business, right? It can cause you to file for bankruptcy if you're just relying on ads. The important structure is when you have the right product market fit, when you're able to generate sales organically, then you add running paid ads to the fire, you're going to grow your business exponentially because you're amplifying your business. You have a actual product the market wants to see. Now I say this to say, what is the perfect ad strategy? How can you run Facebook ads year round? How can you scale? How can you reach the numbers I posted in the past where we're doing $1,000 a day, $1,500 a day in ad spend? Well, it's pretty simple one single product at a gross margin above 75% with that single SKU. Either you have that one single SKU that has really good COGS, or you might create additional product SKUs and put that into a combined bundle and launch that on the front end. But I say this to say, you just need one evergreen offer with a high AOV bundle that can run you around. Your campaign structure is pretty simple. One campaign per bundle, push that going fully broad, no targeting. Now, your creative testing with DCTs, also known as dynamic creative tests. You're maybe doing one or two DCTs every single week, and then you have a main winner's ad set that's copying and pasting that post ID into your main winner's ad set. And then from there, you're set up to scale profitably. Because what happens is, when your budget is set at the campaign level from Facebook ads, all of that ad spend, Meta's using their algorithm, you're working with Meta's machine learning platform to allocate spend to what they deem is best for the end user experience. As a byproduct, you're gonna see lower CPMs at scale. You're gonna see, you're gonna be able to take your ad account from $100 a day to $500 a day to $1,000 a day pretty fast because now you're focusing on variables that move the needle for your business. In the CBO environment, majority of the budget ideally is gonna to go to winners. 80% of your budget is going to go to winners, 20% of your budget is going to go to losers. Vice versa, if you were to do ABO, majority of your budget goes to losers because you're testing everything at a historic spin or at a controlled spin. Like, for example, you might have an ad set at $50 and another ad set at $50 and another ad set at $50. Whereas within the CBO environment and this campaign structure, budget is just getting allocated to whatever meta deems best for the end user, right? And your main focus is if that DCT is getting at least anywhere from 40 to 60% of ad spend and it's profitable over, let's say, past $1,000 in total spend, you can copy that post ID, place it into the main winner's ad set, and then from there over time, you can turn off that DCT and launch new DCTs. So in theory, on the long enough time horizon, you are building a robust system inside your campaign structure that can run you around with this evergreen offer your creators are getting better and better and better. Your CPAs are gonna go lower, lower and lower. And ultimately you're gonna be able to increase your ad spend by five to 10% every other day. That's how we've been able to take ad accounts from $100 a day to $1,500 a day to even $2,000 a day in ad spend. Because we have this broad evergreen campaign that runs year round, that's getting top of funnel net new customers. And then as a byproduct, we now have enough, I would say space within the funnel to now launch other campaigns that are more seasonality pushes, 
uh, more focused on retargeting previous customers we just acquired from our broad campaign. And now we're able to go expand horizontally where we either push down to offers, upsell offers uh, separately. We can have retargeting customers that just entered the ecosystem with a downsell offer, vice versa, right? We have more leg room within the campaign structure and the ad account to now expand horizontally and go up the vertical. So I say this to say, if you're starting out, right, you're only at $100 a day in ad spend, you want to create an evergreen offer that has a gross margin above 75% that can run year round. Once you have that foundation established, you have that offer that can run during Q1, Q2, Q3, even Q4, then you can now go down the vertical where you're doing more interest-based targeting, more uh, ABO tests, more cost caps, big caps, because you have the ecosystem to acquire top of funnel new customers. The reason why we run paid ads is not to retarget our bottom line. It's to grow our top of funnel customer base. Meta is giving you the hack to do that when you go fully broad and your CPMs are going to lower, your CPCs are going to lower, and now you're just focused on areas outside the business that's going to move the needle for the entire funnel, which is if I were to scale ad accounts, the main ecosystem or where I spend majority of my time is making better creatives, better landing pages, better offers. If you go full quants and go the media buyer route, they're so focused on interest-based targeting, so focused on ABO testing, so focused on the actual data inside meta, they forget to take a step back and focus on actual variables that move the needle for your business. Nothing's going to increase your ad account more than having product market fit. Once you have product market fit and you're trying to amplify your business with paid ads, you need to create better creatives, better landing pages, better offers. When you focus on better creatives, you're going to see higher click-through rates, lower CPCs, lower CPMs. As a byproduct, let's say you have $100 in spend and you're getting uh, 100 people to click onto your site from that $100 in spin, so your CPC is around a dollar, then you now go down the vertical, right? How many, let's say you get 100 viewers on your site, let's say 10% add to cart, so you have 10 add to carts out of 100 people that visit your landing page, and let's say less than 3% convert, let's say around, out of those 10 people that added to cart, you have three purchases, let's say your CPA is within break even. Now, if I were to reverse engineer that way to lower the CPA, it's ultimately going to say, okay, how can I increase the offer? How can I make it more incentivizing to get more people to add to cart to now get more people to convert, right? This is where I might do a buy to get one free bundle, or I might do a buy one, get one 50% off offer. Then vice versa, I might look at the landing page and look at load speed and say, okay, what are areas that I can increase the overall conversion, which is faster page loading speeds, a smoother UX design for the iOS device because majority of your traffic is going to come from smartphone and then simultaneously you're maybe a B testing different offers on that single landing page, right? So as a byproduct, you take that same $100 a day in ad spend. Let's say your click rate goes up even higher. Let's say your CPCs go from $1 to now 50 cents. Let's say your uh, overall ad to cart ratio goes from 10% to 12% and then out of those same 100 people that click, let's say you get 12 add to carts. And now you get like 4%, uh, let's say around 3% conversion rate. So out of 12 people that add to cart, let's say four of them convert. Well then in that scope of work, your CPA drops significantly and you're ultimately at like a, I would say around maybe a one to three, one to two, one to 2.5 ratio as far as uh, funnel metrics. So now you're set up to scale. You have profitable unit economics on the front end, your funnel's optimized, and now you can bump up and spend to $500 a day, $1,000 a day. So those areas are going to move the needle for your business because there's they have outside um, second order consequences that's going to benefit your business when you focus on the variables I just covered. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking to get set up for an exit, you want to build a house, check out scalevelocity.io. You can read my 30 page protocol. You can check out our testimonials and our case studies. And if you want to skip the process of getting burned by ad agencies, feel free to book in a call down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.